Coach Hood, thank you very much for joining me today on this Simple Coach to Coach interview uh, to talk about your 2022 season, your first at Vassar. Um, so really interested, but really grateful you taking the time uh, for me today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me again. Um, we're going to make this quick because you, you, your first order of business after you, um, after we talk is to take that sweatshirt off and mail it to me because I think that would look really good on me. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's amazing. I, I'm doing judgment calls. Like my first thing is like, Ooh, I like that sweatshirt. That hat's nice. This I like mm -hmm. that pegboard behind you. It's terrible. oh yeah, I'm sure you see um, a lot of great gear, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like off the charts good. So, <laughs> um, anyhow, hey, first year at Vassar, first year as a head coach. Do I recall? No, mm -hmm. yeah, first yep. year as a head coach. All right, so you got the double whammy. I don't want to say anything about the season right now i just want to hear what your personal assessment of this of your first season was like at vassar i loved it uh, i i i loved it all it was like again you know i mean i i feel really lucky to be here right i know like we had talked about on the previous call mm -hmm. it's a it's a special place right mm -hmm. and What's been so cool is, you know, the longer I'm here, it's only, I mean, it's already been quickly 10 months, right? But it's so great when you're at a place and it just continues to reiterate and revalidate, you know, the move for yourself. And, and so off from that side, it's, it's been awesome, right? And the season was so much fun. You know, the, the, the team did awesome, right? And it was, um, you know, I, I feel I was really grateful for the situation I was coming into, you know, a guy like Andy Jennings, um, you know, fantastic, legendary coach. Right. And yeah. so I was coming into a great place with a with a great group of guys and, um, you know, helped to make the transition very smooth for myself. Right. And, um, you know, they were eager to learn and, and you know, always ready to, to come to work. And, and so it was definitely the kind of place that I was really excited to get up and go to work every day right and obviously some things are always a little different when you're the head guy you know i always say i guess i just walk the sideline a little faster and i stress a little bit more right but uh, um but yeah you know i mean it was um simply put no i was i was really proud of the team and, and just really grateful to get to be a part of it and coach mm -hmm. them yeah. yeah i mean you, you were you were coming into a situation where it's like man big fit shoes to fill um, mm -hmm. um, and like I said, new, new head coach and then a new co the new coach at Vassar, like that's a, mm -hmm. that's a tough, tough act, right? Under any circumstance, no matter who you are coming into that situation. Let me ask you, was there anything that surprised you about the team or, or the school itself? And, and was there anything that you learned that you weren't necessarily expecting? Um, I mean, there's always day to day stuff that's different just whenever you go anywhere. Right. Um, but, but no, as far as, um, what was really surprising, um, not necessarily. I, I, again, I think I, I feel really lucky to, to have been the places that I was at and I, I've been fortunate enough to kind of work with some, and, you know, play for some great coaches that have really helped to, I think, you know, um, hopefully help prepare me for some different mm -hmm. situations. Right. Um, I think one thing that I was, I guess, just always so, and I'll continue to be really happy with, and this is, but I wasn't surprised because of the kind of guy that Andy Jennings is. Right. Mm -hmm. But just how great the guys are. Right. And how open to a new coach they were. Right. Mm -hmm. Like obviously they all love Andy and they were sad to see him go, but it wasn't like also you're getting, any of the, well, we used to do this or, or why are we doing that? You know, it was also, um, they just love the game. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they love to play and they were there every day, excited to get to work and were open to, to, to new things. Um, you know, if there were some different situations or different things that we wanted to try. Right. So I think that was, um, just a really pleasant, 
you know, reality to have this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Let me ask you the boss's question, as I call it. How would you assess your coaching this this season? Careful, recorded. This, you know, internet's forever. So I'm just giving you a fair warning. Well, fault, thank you. Whatever happens. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think it's probably always natural. We're always, I think, uh, at least for myself, you know, always our biggest critics a lot. We always want to keep mm-hmm. doing better. Um, I hope it went well. Um, you know, I just tried to, I think with soccer a lot, at least for me, the way that I see it, I try to, um, you know, put the guys in various exercises and, and, you know, sessions each day to allow them to, that hopefully will will translate to the game. Right. And then just kind of stay out of their way. So, (laughs) you know, hopefully I was, uh, able to do that, you know, um, so yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a tough question, um, you know, to have. But uh, you know, hopefully the guys enjoyed it. You know, hopefully the mm-hmm. team enjoyed the you know what what we're doing each day, and and that's mm-hmm. probably ultimately you know the best way to really assess it. Yeah. So, so let me ask you because you you mentioned that the team was like really really open to you as the coach and sort of the things that you wanted to do. Do did you get a sense? Did, did you, did you, did you change a lot from a lot of the things that they had going on, the, the team culture, all that kind of activity that was in place already? Did you change a lot of that? Or did you get a sense that the players thought, Oh, there's a lot of stuff happening that we've never mm-hmm. experienced before. So now you want me to just divulge all the secrets, right? That we have going up here. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, so, so again, I mean, I, I feel like it just all keeps coming back to the situation that I was coming into, and mm-hmm. and I, I feel really fortunate, you know. No, I think it would have been very counterproductive to try and rip and replace a lot, yeah. right? And, and I think having been an assistant um, at places that we would compete against Vassar, you know, I like mm-hmm. to think that I had a pretty decent idea of the way that 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 they play and Mm. the types of players that they were recruiting which fall in line with how i like to approach the game so Mm. from that standpoint um no there 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 wasn't a ton that i was trying to come in here and immediately change you know um i think it was you know, I took some time to really observe and just see how things now are going from the inside, right? Even more so. And then, okay, maybe what are some things, of course, that are really important to me? And um, just what can we maybe tweak a little bit on the field that I think is going to um, mm-hmm. find the right way to say it, but just allow us to just continue in trying to move the program in a positive direction, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, there were a few things that, that we tried to do on the field that were maybe a little different, but again, the guys were really open to it and, and very receptive. Um, and I was also very fortunate with the senior leadership that I have here within this group and they just helped as well. So it was, you know, a first class guy like Andy, you know, the, the programs in a, um, has a great culture, you know, mm-hmm. within it. And, um, yeah, like I said, a few things that I'm continuing to try and, and, and bring into the program, but they, but things take a little bit of time as well. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so I think a lot of new coaches should hear that very clear, right? Like it would have been counter, unless you come into a situation that's really toxic and really bad, right? Ripping rip, rip and replacing what was done before and sort of what's been built before mm-hmm. is, would be counterproductive, right? Like there's, yeah, you're better off taking it over a series of years as you go forward, right? And sort of, hey, maybe we introduce some new concepts in the spring, now in the spring, right? And you just sort of keep evolving the program in the direction that you want it to go. Yeah, and I, mean, I think I'm continuing to just also that that, that comes with, with, with learning the team and learning the personalities mm-hmm. more and more and, and, and where we are. And, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, clearly a lot has already been really going, has been going very well here already yeah. right so yeah yeah hey let me let me i asked this of um um i asked this of uh 
Coach Toshak, um, and I, I'm curious to get your your thoughts on how do you think the Liberty League as a whole shaped up? I mean, was it more competitive? Were you surprised? Not surprised. I I love the league. It's it's always been so tight. It's just the way I remember it when I was in it in 2015 to 17. You know, mm-hmm. it's the margins are so tight in this league. Yeah. It's so much fun. Um, the teams are all well, so well coached. And, you know, the way that the players get up for each game, there's just something about conference games always, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And especially when it's all, they're all one-offs, you know, and you're kind of doing a single round robin there. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's the thing. I mean, every game you have to show up, they're all, <laughs> they're yeah. all games that are going to be tough. You know, it could go either way. Um, no, yeah, it's it's always hard to predict what's going to happen before it starts and then where it's yeah. going to be at the end, you know. Um, so it was not um, necessarily a surprise from anything from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, all right. So I'm going to ask you some. Um, by the way, you, I look at your schedule, even in your conference games. I mean, come on, right? Like you're out of conference, Western Connecticut, which is really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were just fantastic. Steve yeah, they were. Just, you're right. Montclair State, always tremendously good. It's amazing the amount of talent that they get on the roster. Uh, Clarkson had a really great year. St. Lawrence, mm-hmm. obviously. Hobart. <laughs> like, you're, mm-hmm. you, weren't, you weren't shy about playing. Well, some of them were conference, but the pre – the the non-conference games. I mean, you weren't shy about playing some tough games. That's for sure. I'm mm-hmm. just looking at the schedule, so I'm not. Um, anyhow, <clears throat> sorry, I got yeah. sidetracked. <laughs> All right. So with a season under your belt, I want to ask you about the o- overtime change, the lack of a- overtime in the in the regular season. You had seven ties, four of which were regular season. Um, you lost in the tournament on PKs, and then you had you won your first NCAA game. And I'll ask you about the NCAA's later, but uh, NCAA games the, you you beat Babson on PKs, and then you lost to Bowden on PKs. Let me ask you, just overall, the political question: What are your thoughts on the overtime changes? Do you like? do you not like would you have preferred to have regular season overtime rather than none uh, i only mean tough questions here only yeah tough, tough yeah questions. no i think the way that this <laughs> uh, that that the i mean i think the change um for us was uh was great you know i mean i think when you look at it and this is the way that i have to view it is if we had overtime this year you know, mm-hmm. in this regular season, we had four overtimes. So that would have been another 80 minutes of soccer. We would have basically added another whole game, game. into our schedule yeah. that way. And yeah. so there's the side that what that does to the athletes, right? Um, you know, and so I think from that perspective, it's um, like it was great. You know, I mm-hmm. think it allowed us to um hopefully continue to to maintain even a healthier roster throughout the year right with being able mm-hmm. to to balance and manage the loads but um yeah i mean it's also interesting right i mean we I know we've talked about it on the last call that yeah you know as opposed to okay preparing for overtime maybe depending on how the game is going it might change the game at the 70th yeah, minute instead so right yeah. um 75th minute um mm-hmm. there's the side, I don't know if how it used to be, right? Where, mm-hmm. okay, you're riding the momentum, it's going to come, you know, let's mm-hmm. just, let, let's keep pushing, right? You know, and then, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, I know it can be um, looked at different ways. And then, of course, I know that you do it in the postseason. Um, yeah. So you have to <laughs> find another gear then once you get to the postseason, right? Um but but no, I, I enjoyed the change. Um, mm-hmm. I think from the perspective of, of of what it allowed us to, I think, do with our roster. I think ninety minutes is a 
still a long game and it allows you <laughs> plenty of time to hopefully get a result. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's interesting that you approached because one of my questions was, did it change the way you approach the game? And you're right. Like intentionally, not intentionally, you think in the 70th minute, what do I do to get to the end of the game? Right. Like mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. it's just natural coaching, right? Like this is the situation. How do I, how do I fix this? Or how, what do I do in this, in this case, right? Whether I'm yeah. winning or losing or we're tied and like, and we're struggling or do you own the game? Yeah. Um, okay. So let me ask you. So the first one is about the spring. Now you're going to get an extra week of spring, uh, spring training. Are you good mm -hmm. with that? Is that something that you welcome knowing that Vassar is one of those like high end educational institutions, mm -hmm. um, or yeah, high perform, whatever. It's a smart school. Um, so, uh, like, are you good with that? The extra week? I mean, is that something you welcome? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, it, it's, the way that these decisions are made, right? They don't come to them lightly, right? And mm. it's the the consensus of a lot of a lot of schools. Obviously, it has to be you know voted on, and and the votes from within each school, you know, are taking the perspectives of many different people. Um, so this is, um, I think, as it relates to our environment um, here, I, I think, yeah. I mean, I'm obviously I'm a very big proponent of the Division three student athlete experience and everything, and yeah. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not going to change. I mean, you know, just adding an extra week, like it's not such an invasive change necessarily yeah. to the way things are, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, still allows you know our students to really explore various things on campus. You know, allows them to still um you know manage their you know manage their academics accordingly and you know um a number of things i don't think it's really i mean we haven't fully continued to dive into it i mean i know that that doesn't go into effect until, until next um, year right later but yeah. um but yeah but no i mean it's uh, i think the way that, that they've done it you know it doesn't necessarily probably change a ton in the grand scheme but i think also um, yeah, you know, get to play some more soccer is always fun, right? You know, <laughs> get, get on the field a bit more. And, yeah. um, you know, I know that our, our team loves to play and, and our team loves to train. So it's, mm. yeah, I, I know I would like to think that they're probably all really excited about it and, um, just allow us to continue to do more. Right. Yeah. And what can you do with that time to, you know, further continue, just, you know, make additional gains right yeah. so we'll get into the spring at the end but um let me ask you you know there was the proposal to extend the season the regular season so this fall by like a week at the beginning an extra week in the beginning and an ex you know extending out the season by a week i mean do you have thoughts on that is that would would, would you have wanted that um I think when I think about extending the season, um, yeah, I mean, it's always, like I said earlier, right. It's always fun to just yeah. be with the team more, you know, and play more soccer. Yeah. Right. You know, um, I think it would just, uh, if that's what made the most sense to do, right. You know, yeah. simply put, I know that there was some decisions with, with, I know that would be, you know, there's continuing, they're continuing to do more research on some things. Right. Um, the acclimatization and the, um, you know, with, with, with sports medicine and sport performance and, and, and things. Um, and, and yeah, I think, you know, I guess from just, it sounds like they weren't there yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, I don't really have a lot to, I don't really have a lot to say on it right yeah. now. You know, I think yeah. we'll just continue to, to wait and see, right. Time will yeah. tell. Um, yeah. but but yeah, right. Always getting to have the opportunity to play some more. If there's a way to do that, it's always fun, <laughs> you know, um, if it makes sense to do so. Yeah, I, that, that's that's a good point, because at least it was voted on. Right. Like, yeah. You know, before. Um, 
you know, it's like it's the Overton window, right? Like at least the subject was broached and now people are talking yeah. about it and trying to figure it out. And when you get to a point where maybe the schools are ready, maybe they're more amenable to what's going on, then, mm-hmm. you know, that's not a bad thing, right? So, mm-hmm. um, okay. <clears throat> you went nine, three, and seven. Congratulations. Thank you. You, you lost in the, the first round. Um, this, this is like totally jumbled questioning. So I apologize if it makes no sense no problem. In order, but, um, you lost in the first round of the Liberty league, as I mentioned, did you think you were going to make the tournament? Make the NCAA tournament? NCAA. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was hopeful. Right. Mm -hmm. I I, I think we were a team that was um, we were we were a true bubble team. Mm -hmm. It's probably the best way to say it. Right. I think that, you know, we had a the the guys put together a great year. You know, they had Mm -hmm. a nice body of work and, you know, they put together a really sound profile. Right. Um, But it's ever it's always hard to know for sure. Right. I've been on both sides of it as a player and coach, you know, so Mm -hmm. I think it's always hard to. Yeah, until you hear yeah. your name, right? You're you're yeah. never quite sure unless you win the conference tournament, right? So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. no, that, that's I was looking and and I I wasn't sure you were going to get in. I, again. I didn't even think Williams would have gotten in, right? Like I just sort of looked at the amount of ties they had, and I and and it's interesting because I look back on 2021 and you were Vassar was 11 four and two and didn't get a at lar- at large. Um, which I thought was interesting, but um, mm-hmm. what was the mood when you found out? Like, what was the mood about? Hey, we're in the NCAA's. What are we gonna, you know, what's that gonna look like? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna play? All those, all those different things. I mean, obviously you were excited, but yeah, I mean, you, did your coaching mind go into gear about like, okay, we gotta, we gotta get ready, all that kind of. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you, you hit on the first thing where obviously it was just, you know, pure excitement, <laughs> you know, yeah. and like right away, you know, I was so happy for the team and so happy for the guys. And, um, you know, it's a goal that that you work for right at the start of the year and, and things that, that you hope to be able to accomplish. Um, you know, it's a um, accumulation of small steps. Um, and I was really happy that, the you know, we were able to keep the season going. Um, and then, though, you got to quickly shift gears, right? You know, it's, you know, because you kind of go from where you lose in the conference tournament and mm-hmm. you're not sure, right? And so, okay, yeah. we got to quickly then, you know, screw our heads back on and, and you know, mm-hmm. get, get ready to go. And the, um, the mood within the group was, was filled with excitement, but then there was also of a, of hey like you know getting here is great but but now we want to do something with it yeah 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 you know it's that's, it's yeah. like there's the goal of getting there yeah. but like that's not just it right yeah. we want to go and 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 make something happen right yeah. you know it's it's a chance to go and play other teams and and play on a national stage right and yeah. and, and and try to you know just just see where it goes um yeah. So now we're measuring so, up against the elite. Right? Yeah. Could, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and so it, it, it's great to get in, but, but no, like let's go in and, and see what we can do and try to show people who we are. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So no, there was definitely kind of like that again, that immediate excitement, but focused mindset again, yeah. um, which was fun. Yeah, I could, it, it is, it, it's almost like a, getting into the tournament is, is almost like you, have to forget everything that happened and now you're like well what do i got to do to get to the end yeah right like what do i got to do to get to that last game and and it's it's a totally different mindset um Mm -hmm. all right i I gotta ask you because if you look back on this season what's the most memorable game you have you had for you uh, you personally of the of your entire season Only tough questions. I, I know, I know. <laughs> there are a couple, right? I mean, it's hard to always pick out one. I mean, for me, mm-hmm. it was really special playing St. Lawrence. 
you know, mm -hmm. up there. Oh, totally. It was fun yeah. getting to play against Tosh. And, yeah. you know, it's such a great, it's such a, you know, challenging competitive weekend for our team and to go up mm -hmm. there and, you know, and, 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 you, you know, you just continue. So we really showed a lot, right. Mm -hmm. That weekend. Um, but yeah, it was special playing him. And then probably the, 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 the Babson game in the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. you know, um, You're, yeah, it, it was fun. It, it, it was great. You know, like you're in a, you're in an NCAA tournament game and, and, and you're toe to toe with a great team and you, it, it goes the distance. And it was kind of one of those crazy moments that, you know, it goes down to a shootout and they're trying to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, um, yeah. and, and, you know, it, it, it went our way and it was just, it was awesome. The, the, yeah. It was great to see the excitement for the guys, and um, you know we were moving on to the sec to, to the next round. Um, and then, unfortunately, the shootout didn't go our way the next day. But um, that that just weekend as a whole was was just really really amazing. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I um I was cheering you on. I think that was the game I watched. I was cheering you on for that one. Um, I I will I will say too, right? Like especially for the guys like who may not have been there the your younger guys like it's important just to be get in because now you experience it you know the level that you have to be mm -hmm. at to compete in the ncaa and 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 it's the teams that do that and then they're like okay we're gonna go again and we're gonna go until they get right i mean i think that's yeah. the nature of the beast right so um probably a fan i mean i would have loved to have been there I didn't enroll. I didn't get accepted. Like I thought you were going to pull some strings and uh, oh, yeah. man. that would have been fun. That would have been. Yeah. Fun. Right. Yeah. No, it, it was awesome. It, it was, it, it was a blast, the whole experience. So, um, all right. So let me ask you, what are your plan? I gotta, I'm going to probe you. I, you don't have to give me secret sauce. Although if it breaks news, I'll gladly take the secret sauce. What are your plans for the spring? Like, what are the sort of things, again, still, you're still first year with these guys. That, the way I look mm -hmm. at it, right, is like until you get that back into, okay, we're back in the fall. Now you know. Like, what are you planning on for the for the spring, for the non-traditional season, as I have mm -hmm. to remind myself it's called? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, um, I, I'm really excited for it. You know, I think the, the spring is always a good opportunity to get back um, one, get back on the field. You know, I know the guys are always really excited after the long winter, you know, to, yeah. to get back on the field. Um, so I think this year specifically, it's an opportunity just to continue sharpening it up and, you know, evolving or, or you know, fine tuning some things that we want to do. Yeah. Right. You know, so I think you're trying to find, um, I think a balance for me, right? So I look at the fall season and how did it go and where are areas that, that we can continue to, you know, like what's, what's you kind of have a priority list, right? Of things that you want to try to accomplish to help us keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And what should we really target then this spring, you know, technically and tactically. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I like to, you know, I, I like to play a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to, you know, put the guys in situations where, you know, it's as game like as possible and, and be able to kind of learn in those situations. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that combination of, you know, being um, very, you know, having deliberate practice and, and continuing to make gains while also playing. You know, I try to always remember what it was like to be a player and yeah. I love to I love to play, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. so yeah, I try to really kind of bring that out a lot as well. Yeah, so. Yeah. Do you, how much how much do you focus in on like technical aspects of the game like the individual guys you got to get better on your with your making it up first touch and your passing's got to be better on the deck and we got do, do you do a lot of that knowing that they're then going to go into the summer and then whatever happens happens and then they come back yeah no we talk about that on an individual basis as well um, I try to mm -hmm. you know when we're out on the field talk to the guys all the time. Um, we will do things within a team setting always, you know, we'll always mm -hmm. try to include at least one technical aspect of practice, you know, whether mm -hmm. uh, that's passing or, you know, driving balls or just some various technique stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, but also, um, yeah, I, I try to talk with guys about 
if there's certain areas, you know, cause there's only so much time that we can do during a practice. Right. Yeah. So maybe we'll do stuff where, you know, you can have, you know, you can try to break up and to do some functional work during practice, right. Have certain groups mm-hmm. do things. Right. Yeah. Um, or really just trying to, Hey, you know, give guys exercises that, that, that they have, if they want to, you know, um, maybe as they leave, be able to do stuff on their own if they'd like to, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah. kind of having that too. Okay. I'm, I'm starting to think a lot about spring. I mentioned this before where I think the really good teams come up with a really good plan in the spring to figure out a way to grow the team, to grow the players that they have so that they're ready for the fall. And I'm trying to figure out, imagine how is that done, right? Like, Mm -hmm. how do you do that? What's the best, what's the best use of the time, right? Like if all you're going to do, not, I didn't mean this in your case, but like if all you're going to do is throw a ball out there and have them play, that's probably good. They get to play, but how Mm -hmm. much did they get actually capture? Right. And so just trying to figure out the, the depth of like a, what a practice would look like or what a spring season would look like. Um, yeah. L- last question for you. Last question for you. And then, and then you could get back to mailing the top to me. Um, <laughs> what, it, what does your, what, what's your recruiting class look like? Um, yeah. And, and sort of what were the things that you were, I'm curious to know, honestly, like what your first recruiting class, what were the things that you were looking for? either to augment the team or to get players that sort of fit within what you want, how you want the team to play. So I'm very excited about the group coming in. Um, You know, I think when recruiting, um, you know, you're always trying to look at, at, at need. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think we're we're in a fortunate place. We have some guys that are coming back for an additional season, um, you oh, know, wow. from COVID. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, really, we're just trying to continue making the group better, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when I'm looking at players, you know, I'm trying to find guys that are going to fit with how we want to play, technically, mm-hmm. tactically, you know, how do they hand, how do they, you know, solve the problems on the field, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a major part for me is always um, the character piece. Right. Mm -hmm. When I'm recruiting players and and trying to find the right players for what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I think and because we've talked about I think we talked about on our last call is, you know, as you go up in levels. Right. All the players get better. Everyone's going from situations where they were all the best player on their high school team. You know, they're up at the top of their club teams. Mm -hmm. And now what what helps them continue to make gains once they're here? right? There's Mm -hmm. those intangibles, right? So that's really a massive emphasis for me during the recruiting process Mm -hmm. um, of finding guys that are going to fit within our character, fit within the group. And Mm -hmm. I like to try and, um, you know, think about, I mean, like like we've been saying, you know, I feel really fortunate with with where the group is um, Mm -hmm. coming in and trying to continue to keep that that culture strong and people Mm that will be a right fit with, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here. So. Yeah, yeah. Does it? I don't know if I asked you this. I may have, but like, is it a challenge from a recruiting perspective for the, to, for the, um, to get? Because you know, again, your high academic school. Like, does it make it a challenge to find the right players? Honestly, curious. If not, I mean. No, I mean I think, um, well, soccer's really big in this country right and 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 there are a lot of players (laughs) you know so i think it's you just you know yeah you it's the kind of thing that that you're doing most of the year right trying to find you know which players might be the right fit for vassar but also which you know will vassar be the right fit for them you know um and i think it's always interesting the way that things work out where there's the right school for a number of different players and, and how things just kind of tend to match up, (laughs) you know? So, um, you just, we just try to learn as much as we can about, about people and, you know, who, um, you know, if it'll be the right fit, I guess, simply put, you know, it's almost self-selecting too, to a certain point, right? Like the only players that are come, 
the only players that are going to necessarily try to get on your radar are academically inclined anyhow, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, that's why I never really followed up on my not getting accepted because I kind of knew with my 2.2 mm-hmm. grade point average that I would never get into Vassar. So, um, anyhow, hey, coach. Thank you again. This was this was awesome. As always, as I love talking to you. You're one of the really good guys in the game, and and well, certainly I'll be be watching. You know, going forward, and maybe we'll connect again in the summer, and you can, yeah, I can grill you again with um oh, the, about the upcoming season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no. So well, thank tough. you so much. I re- <laughs> I know, right? I'm here on the hot seat. Well, I yeah. uh. I, I greatly appreciate you reaching out. You know, I'm uh, I'm honored to get to be a part of it, and that you are interested in what I have to say. Right? Yeah. So, so thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this show, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. You can also find me on anti-social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks. This is a message from my chief marketing officer. I think this keeps him happy.